Hello and welcome Arsh Tishim in the hangar today. I will give you my follow-up experience to the initial review about the 3D Maker Pro Eagle. LiDAR scanner. I got this December 2024. I think on 17th of June they will give out another round of very good pricing on this thing. I had this now for a longer time and I've seen a lot of development. So in the beginning I was a bit skeptical if they just overpromise and stop in the development and just yeah go for the cash. <laughs> what I've seen and the feedback that I gave them and how they responded makes me quite confident in saying they have quite good programmers. On the hardware side deliver additional RTK units for even more precision. There has been two or three firmware updates on the for the device itself. But the Ray Studio, the software to work on the LiDAR files, has been improved by quite a lot. The first version was very complicated to use, a lot of steps. It needed a tutorial and now it's a one-click thing. So you just download the measurement file from the storage card here. And in the Ray Studio you point to this directory and then you hit either basic data colorize for the color point cloud or you can go Gaussian splatting even. They included the Gaussian splatting calculations there as well. All of which are very complicated steps in the background as I've seen but they now reduce it to a one-click thing. And they have presets you can tinker around with the settings a bit although I didn't. It's quite important to make a firmware update on this device so go ahead and download the latest version uh, you will find a lot of links in the description of this video. Walk you through the firmware update process, which is quite easy, so no, no problem there. From 105, which was March, to 107, which is currently in June 2025. You have to put the firmware onto this USB stick. An upgrade folder with just the zip file, the one gigabyte zip file in it. And for the calibration you need a subfolder calibration on the USB stick, which holds all the calibration files they sent you in the folder upgrade and if it's there it will find it and then you turn on the thing you power it with a power supply and then you can upgrade take a couple of minutes and then you're good to go and after the firmware update is finished it will reboot and then you should have a folder named calibration on this usb stick with the calibration files which should correspond to your serial number like i have 71 and in the best case you have a JSON file with 71. You import it. Let's go through the settings. They told me that these accuracy settings and point density settings, they do not affect the scan at all. It's just the live view on the screen here while scanning will be affected. So it will not affect the accuracy of your scan. So you can go small and low for the quickest live view. Language is just Chinese or English. Version, you can check the firmware, storage. You should always save it to the SD card. And here's the shutdown. So with this firmware update, we now have a few user interface changes. But more importantly, we have auto exposure for the cameras. For the cameras, not for the LiDAR. LiDAR doesn't need auto exposure. It's just laser measurement. But the cameras, before they had auto exposure, it was always either too bright or too dark. Okay, this is the older firmware, which didn't have proper exposure. It had like fixed exposure and you see here in the cardboard it's too dark. And with the newer firmware, it looks better now. It's properly lit. It's still unsharp. But now it's evenly lit. That's very good for Gaussian splatting and also for the point colorization. And we also got Wi-Fi transfer. I didn't test it because Wi-Fi can only be so fast. And if you take out the storage card with this inconveniently placed under this thing here, if you take out the SD card and use something like a fast SD card reader, you will get 90 megabytes per second of transfer speed. And those, those LiDAR measurements, they get a few gigabytes large so don't use Wi-Fi transfer use the storage card trick. The other thing that was not working in the beginning is 48 megapixels. So they advertise this as having one, two, three, four 48 megapixel cameras and when I tested this first all of the images they just look like 12 megapixel cams. 
the case if you just do a LiDAR scan, a moving LiDAR scan, you only get 12 megapixel stills. Or you can just use the front cam and, and shut off the other cams to save space. But if you are in tripod mode, while LiDAR scanning you press this button, it will take a 48 megapixel image then. Only then. The hardware is capable of 48 megapixel images for performance reasons maybe. It only does it when pressing the button in the tripod mode, not in the handheld mode. In the handheld mode you should walk smooth and not shake it too much because even when walking smooth outside there I got a lot of the pictures quite unsharp. This concludes the changes directly on the device but we've also got a lot of changes in the RAID Studio software. As I said in the beginning it was very complex to use, very tedious. I know that some people struggled with this and now the, it's just a one-click thing. You just open the project, choose the scan folder and hit select folder. Choose between just basic data generation, which will be the fastest. Colorize, where it will also check the pictures, make the points colorful. Or the longest process is Gaussian splatting. I will use colorize here now, set it as an outdoor scene. Okay, that was not a large scan, but nonetheless it was really fast. Let's take a look at the finished results. Yeah, it, it really looks nice now. I mean, they got a lot of feedback from me and maybe also from others. Okay, I will now make a gauze out of this. A speciality is the Gaussian splatting, which I did a lot of research and tried to do it myself, but it's really complicated. There are some web pages where you can upload files and they do the Gaussian splatting for you from a series of pictures taken at different angles. It tries to calculate clouds of probability and it open high quality, which took quite a long time. Even a brand new Ultra 9 285K is only yellow. They say it would be better to have 32 cores instead of 24 cores. RTX 4070 is okay. It's about the graphic RAM and memory is also okay. You should have 32 gig. Once the calculations are finished, it will show you this screen again and don't process it again. It will take the same amount of time again. Here in this window you can preview, export or upload. Whereas upload didn't work for me, it loaded something but I don't know where to. But the export gives you a PLY file. But here in the preview window we get a Gaussian browser. And this is an interactive scene. You can use WASD, QE. This is quite slow and if you press shift key then you go faster. A bit higher. So if you watch my drone reviews you already know this area because I used to fly my laps with new drones here. Overall the graphics look nice. If you come closer to details it gets blurry or cloudy. And I think the floating cloud parts here are actually the scanner or myself moving. So it should be, maybe it was my fault that I didn't filter it before making a gauze. But this was really just a one click operation. I could decide to go for the higher detail. Should not expect to be able to read signs. So this is quite large. Yeah, you see details like this power outlet here. You don't see that our little dog sits here. <laughs> so not very detailed, but a fun look. If we go up a bit more, yeah. Things like flowers and trees work quite nice. Distant objects look also nice, but if we were to head over to the other side of the road, <laughs> you see that the scenery falls apart into very unprobability like things. Okay, so that's it for my first proper Gaussian split, which if you want to do it yourself, quite a lot of work. And here is a one point solution. In my case, it didn't look very detailed. Maybe it was my fault during scanning. Even if it's just a small yard that I scanned here, I should take numerous labs and walk in different heights, try different orientations and produce a very large scan. And then I'd also face a very, very long processing time. You can view it 
directly in Ray Studio and you can upload it to their cloud and view and share it there. If you want to share more than two sceneries, you might need to pay some monthly fee. Just know it's very, very complex mathematics in the background and for what it is, it works really, really easy for us. Just your computer has to do a lot of work to get it look so nice. Yeah, and one of the biggest changes in Ray Studio in the current version is that it now properly handles large scans. So I did an 11 minutes really, really large scan of my property. Which looks amazing. And yeah, it works. And it works quite fast, in my opinion. That's all for this follow-up video. I still think it's an amazing device way ahead to the competition in terms of pricing. I didn't test something like a fat Leica 10 or $20,000 device to tell you the difference. Maybe it's more accurate then. Apparently you can go to GitHub and download open source software and buy something like a, I think it's called the Levox LiDAR scanner module and produce this by yourselves, but it's a lot of work. This is a finished product. Now the software is quite good and yeah, I think it can be used productive now. And yeah, it's a very good and affordable solution. If there are some questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, check out the main review if you haven't seen it. It's quite long and a bit complicated and most of the steps that looked complicated there are already outdated. So it's, it's way easier to handle this thing now than it was half a year ago. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.